Hi, and welcome back to the cloudy desk on what is <laughs> actually quite a cloudy day here. So this is a very aptly, very aptly named today. <laughs> um, we are going to be, oh, that should probably be in there, um, organizing my ink samples a bit because as you can see, I just sort of store them in this box and it can be hard to find. Um, I mean, they're still going to be in this box, but I am going to be putting uh, little color samples on the top just to make it a little easier to identify what things are without having to pick each and every one up. Um, before we get started, though, I just wanted to share sort of this is what I use for my ink journal or log or whatever. This is a take a note, um, monthly, I think it's called like the slim record, um, undated notebook. And I use it so I have one month is all of the bottles I own, and I have it broken into some categories, and so as I own bottles, I'll put them here. Um, I have been skipping pages just in case it sort of bleed through, because this is, I believe, Tamoy River paper. Um, I'm going to be doing some ink vent in here too. Um, and then I also log all of my samples that I have. Um, I have them broken up into sort of larger color categories. So like this is greens, yellows, and browns, just because like in a hoe I think of as a brown, but also kind of as a green and things like that. So this just sort of helps me not have to um, make decisions, <laughs> I guess. Um, although I am also pro logging things in multiple places if I think they fit in multiple categories. Then I have blues, blacks, and grays, and reds and purples. So you can definitely see the greens and browns are my favorite because I have by far the most of those. Um, haven't really decided. The sort of second half of the journal is just like plain gridded paper. I either might make more sort of layouts kind of like this if I fill these up or maybe I'll at some point if I ever do currently inked type things I could write those in here in the second half. I cut one blotting page down to size just so I have something should I need it. So yeah so that's my ink journal but now Let's get down to the real business. I have a little towel here. I have these paper reinforcement labels. These should work. I believe they are the, the non-plastic kind, so it should be fine. But let's take out just a couple of those to get going. Yeah. Move things around a little bit to make it easier. I'm using my fountain pendulum pen rest for this lovely velvet base for my paintbrush. And let's just start with a handful of these at a time. It actually would be smart. put the inks I haven't done yet in the this the lid of the box that way when they're done I can put them in the box and I don't have to dig around as much so if this is loud apologies And then 
Once they're finished, I'll put them in the vase. Yeah, I'm doing this now because I sort of never anticipated having a ton of ink samples. Um, and now that I do, like, I don't have so many that I can't find what I'm looking for. It just takes a minute. But I know I'm going to be getting even more soon with the ink vent starting. Well, actually, by the time this is up, it's probably already started. So I just wanted to get a bit of a head sort of a head start on making this all a little easier to deal with. Um, and then it'll just be a bit easier to maintain going forward. Although I don't want to have more ink than can fit in this box, just because that is more than I can realistically handle, use, etc. Okay. But first, we have Ferris Wheel Press, Peter Moss. Now I might not talk about each of these, I haven't used them all yet. I don't have a lot of thoughts on them, and also I don't know how, how long this would be if I play this at sort of real speed. So maybe after a couple of these I might speed it up, record voiceover, who knows shall see. That's a nice, nice green. And these are, like I said, all already in my ink journal, so I do already know that I have them, and I can always refer to the ink journal to look for them, but this will just make things stand out a little bit more. Getting all the greens first, it looks like. And I can actually, so you can see, sort of, in the box now. I have another way of identifying them without having to pull every single thing out. If I know I'm looking for a green, I can find it. Yep, another green. Forest black. Haven't used this one yet. Um, I currently have the brown document ink in my art pen, but I think once that one runs out, I'm going to switch it to this forest black one and give that a shot just to see how it goes. Um, I was going to put black back in that pen, but I do have black in a number of my other drawing tools, so it doesn't have to be in my drawing fountain pen. This one is a Kobe, a blue Shaking things up here. I actually, I just had this in one of my Twisbees. I didn't love it. It was just like a little too... Actually, no, I'm lying. This one I currently have in my Lamy fountain pen. Um, and I don't quite have an opinion of it yet. Still need to use it a bit more. I do like this darker blue. It's a lighter blue. I'm on the fence about, but we will get there when we get there. This is one that I won in a giveaway on Sima May's channel from her uh, 30 inks in 30 days. I don't have this one inked up yet, but I think it's going to be one of the ne in my next round once my um, current pens are emptied. Making a lot of noise here, so apologies if this is a very tricky or Yamazuki Iro. I didn't, this didn't work for me. It was a little too light. Um, I did have it in a rather fine pen, and I think it could work for me in a maybe in a broader nib, but I have other sort of similar colors that I think I like more. This one 
I don't feel a pressing need to try it in a, at least not right away, in another pen. So let's get another batch. Oh, see, this is nice. Another one that I got from the giveaway from Tina Nang already has. Already has that on the cap, so I don't have to worry. Got all my Yoseka little, little babies, too. Yeah, so I guess while I'm sticking these on, one thing I can say is sort of, I'm not the biggest ink experimenter yet. Um, I mean, I guess that's a bit of a lie. I do clearly have a lot of samples, but I really for a while was like, for a while, when I started buying samples, was like on the search to find my favorite X color, my favorite Y. So like at the time it was my favorite brown and my favorite green, which I have found, and I will talk about them when we get to those samples. Um, and I have since purchased bottles of those because then, and then once I found them, my question is like, well, what am I continuing to do? I have my favorite brown, I have my favorite green, I'm working on finding my favorite gray. So what, if I find them, what, what am I, am I still buying ink? Am I sort of just being happy with what I have? Um, so I'm trying to figure that out. And maybe it's that I keep a couple colors always inked, but then maybe I just have like so I have a green that I love. So maybe some months I switch up that green or I have a second pen and a, I have two green inks inked up. Um, who knows? Oh, I forgot to tell you which one this is. This is another Kobe ink. I really love Kobe inks. Um, they've all really performed really well for me so far and I love the colors. Um, so this one is number 32, Taman Purple Gray. I do like that these are reusable and that Yoseka will take the sample bottles back. Um, I haven't emptied any of these yet, but um, I just like the idea of that. I might have to switch my water out soon. We'll see. Um, so the Taman Purple Gray and then this one which is the Lennon Toolbar Silky, which I believe is one of their limited edition inks. I was on I was on the search for my perfect purple gray, which may or may not be distinct for my search for my favorite gray. Um, and I really loved both of these, but I believe I think I liked the Silky, this, this linen toolbar one, more than the Kobe ink. I would have to test them both again to be sure, but I think, I mean, they're quite similar, especially in this light. The Kobe is more purple, and the linen toolbar is more gray. So I guess it comes down to if I find a different gray ink that I like more, maybe I buy the bottle of the Kobe to be sort of my my purple ink. But if I find a purple ink I like more, maybe I do the linen toolbar to be my gray. Who knows? Still figuring that all out. But really I should just be focusing on using these multiple times. Um, so this is from that similar exploration, the Sailor Ink Studio, I think it's 683? Yeah. Um, this one I, I liked, I have no complaints with. It was definitely, I, if I'm remembering correctly, definitely more of the purple than the purple gray. Um, but I had it in my 
Sailor Pro Gear Slim, medium fine, and I loved it. It was very fun to sketch with, so maybe I'll give it a try. Again, I mean sketch with, it's not a water safe, or water resistant ink, so. So this one, Kiona Oto Quilted Eero. I love this. This isn't my my favorite green that I found, but I actually am very tempted to buy a bottle of this as well, since it is, it's a lighter green than the one I had found initially, and I was really enjoying using this one, especially in my planner. It just made me very happy to see it on the page, and I guess that's a feeling that's nice to have in one's planner. Oh, this is the one that I currently have in my drawing pen, the Diatrementus Sepia, and it's been really good. It's a, it's a good shade of brown for sketching in, and that has like a, that cool antique look to it. Um, it's just a good brown, so I'm definitely looking forward to playing with that a little bit more as well. Riley Miller Kobe Shinkai Chi Gold. This one I also haven't tried. This is sort of, I think I'm a little scared to try it because it feels like it's in a similar color family as the Yamabuki Iro that we already painted up here. And I think. It makes me think it's also just going to be a little too light for me in everyday use. Um, it does look, I mean, it's still wet, but maybe it's a little bit darker. Maybe it's a little less, a little less yellow, maybe a little more green. So maybe it should work. I should give it a shot. Um, Pelican Edelstein Appetite, another one from that giveaway that I won. I have this currently in my Twisby. No, that's a lie. I don't know what anything is in anything in right now. I don't have this. This is another one that's next on my lineup. I sort of, I have a list of the ink swatches as I as I get them, I swatch them in, not the monthly notebook, actually I can show that after another notebook that I have, um, as I get them, and so every time I have an ink, a pen that is empty, I look to see what samples that I haven't used yet, and I try to use sort of one of the older ones, that way I am making my way through my list because I don't want to have inks that I haven't tried yet for too long. Oh, so this one I was very excited about. Also, again, part of that giveaway, Troublemaker Hanging Rice. Haven't put it in a pen yet, but it's a green that I really want to try. Um, and that's also why I haven't purchased, part of the reason, I haven't purchased the uh, Coca Iro from Kyono Oto yet, is because I, I want to try this one, because I don't want to buy too many bottles of green ink just because I do, I mean, honestly, maybe I'll hit a point where I do only ever write in green, but we're not there yet. Aha, uh -huh. after all that thinking and thinking. So these are the two. So this is the Coca Iro. This one's the Hanging Rice. So they are, sim again, I mean, this isn't the best. I could show you the samples on the actual um, ink swatches, but you can sort of get a sense that they are similar. So I do want to try this before I commit to this one. And again, I have so much left. I don't need to buy a bottle. I have so much I can use. I think that's also something I need to remind myself that I shouldn't, I should finish my samples before I commit to a bottle. Because just because I like something doesn't mean I need to own a bottle of it. I might find something else. So this is all tying into my trying to be smarter about my purchases. 
2024. I mean, 2023 was really the year that I got back into fountain pens and inks. And really, when I was into fountain pens before, I had, like, two bottles of ink, and those were the only ones I used. I had, like, I had a blue and I had a green, and that was it. And then I had the carbon black, but that was specifically for art, so I didn't use that for anything else. So when I discovered ink samples, I got very excited and trying things and having multiple pens inked up and using different colors beyond sort of the ones I, the ones I'm typically interested in, you know. Um, and so I probably went all overboard. So hopefully I can start to slow down, be a little more mindful shop shop the stash if I'm getting antsy because I will probably have things I won't have used especially because I have 25 more inks on the way in the um ink vent and I sort of I my ink vent arrived in the mail must have been like October sometime maybe end of October and I've had a couple of times between now and then I've been like itchy to buy inks and ink samples and I really have had to remind myself that I have 25 sitting in a box in the other room that I will be opening soon and I can I should wait because there might be a color in there that I really like and want to try or maybe one of the colors I'm looking at there'll be a similar one so I'm just trying to be patient and go through those and maybe finish up some of these samples, some of the ink vent colors before I start making more purchases. Um, like I said, I don't want to have more ink samples than can fit in this box. I know the dye mine inks won't fit in here, that will be a separate box, but that sort of counts separately, I believe, personally. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, that's frustrating. There's one left. Mm. One left. I guess I have to save that whole sheet. Oh, actually, I could put this on my sticker release paper. For now, though, I'll just cut it out so I don't have to save this whole bit of plastic. Okay. So, Tang Nisei Blue one of the Yoseka Ceramics inks. I had a really hard time with this one in a pen. I think it was really dry and then also really light and I just felt like I struggled with it, struggled to write. And I didn't enjoy that. And I don't, maybe again, it's something that would work better in a different pen. But I had such a hard time with it that first time that I'm, I have no interest in, like, there's, like, no bone in my body that wants to try <laughs> Again, and that's not to go against anyone that loves it. It just didn't work for me, personally. Oh, this one is actually one that maybe shouldn't always be used in a fountain pen, maybe more of a dip pen ink, because it's one of the Kaki Mori. Takinoi Tatari uh, number two. It's sort of dated, but I think it's to Totori Torori. I think Torori. Um, I think it's a pigment ink. Um, so I've been very careful when I have used it in a pen to wash it quite well. So Yokyo no Oto Sakura Azumi, I think. It's the Sakura petals on a cloudy day color. Another one of my like purpley grays. This one I really liked, but it was a little looked a little like watery to me when I wrote with it. So while I really like the color, I don't think it's gonna be that like go-to purple gray to me. Um, I definitely want to use it again, but it's not enough to have a bottle. This is probably sufficient. And then Kyono Oto. Ochikuriyo. This one I loved. 
I have purchased a bottle. I have not finished the sample, but I have purchased a bottle. This is my go-to brown. Um, it's just exactly what I wanted. It's not too orangey or red of a brown. It's not too dark where it looks as though it's black. I just really like this color. Um, and I really like the Kiona Oto ink. Um, Colorverse, Walk the Dog. This is one I really wanted to like. But again, I really struggled with it in a pen. I don't really know why, and I don't really, I say, I think it felt dry. I could be identifying a different issue of the ink, and I'm just ascribing it to dryness, but it just felt like I was fighting it. I like the color, but I, I felt like I was fighting the pen the whole time. Uh, Lamy Crystal Azurite. This is the one I actually have in my Twispy right now, and I'm really enjoying. It's been fun. I just wrote a couple of letters with it. Um, it has a really nice sheen, but I just, I don't think I'm writing in with a broad enough nib to really get that significantly. I get little, little bits of haloing on certain spots, but not like significant amounts. But it's a really nice purple and definitely not that purple gray. This is like a very bright, dark, bluey purple. Really dark and bright. Doesn't make sense, but it's that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Robert Oster Cafe Chroma. Is it decides? I liked this brown. I was really happy with it. It was one I'd heard a lot of people sort of hype up, and so I got it as a sample with a pen that I had purchased off of Mercari. And it was one, I really liked it, didn't like it more than that Kiona Oto brown, so I'll use it. I'll definitely try to finish this, but don't need to own it. This was the Kobe blue that I didn't love, just for the color. It worked well, it was really well behaved. It was just, I'm not a super saturated, and by saturated I don't mean I just mean it looked sort of like that uh, purple I was talking about earlier when I wrote with it. It looked watery, kind of washed out, um, like slightly transparent, and I just didn't love it. But it is a really nice, it is, it's called like an indigo blue, and I did think it looked very much like, like a denim color. It just didn't quite work for me, but it's beautiful. Colorverse Coffee Break, this, along with the Walk the Dog, I really wanted to like these two, and I didn't like either of them, and I both, both of them felt like I was fighting the pen to make them work, um, so I, I think I will not be trying more of the Colorverse inks, or at least I will not be purchasing them. I am gifted samples, I'll definitely try and see if one of those changed my mind, but I do not want to currently do not want to be spending money on that. Diamine Earl Grey currently is a definitely a contender for that favorite gray color, especially in a very fine nib like the Sailor Medium Fine. It just it feels like a pencil. It feels graphite-y. Um, it's Especially with the Sailor feedback, it makes it really kind of feel like I'm writing with a pencil, which is someone where, I again, I think I've mentioned I used to be an illustrator and I would always do pencil sketches. It just gives me that feeling and I makes me really happy. So wouldn't be surprised if this is one I purchase at some point. Uh, Iroshizuku Yamaguri. This was definitely a contender for that favorite brown. I really liked this, but in the end this was just darker 
in the Kiona Oto one, and I didn't want a brown that would read as black. I wanted it to be quite clearly a brown. And so while I really liked this one, I think I think I'll just stick to samples because those bottles are so big. I'm sure I could, I mean I know they sometimes have those smaller ones, but still. Uh, Ferris Wheel Press Goose Poupon. This one I sort of lump in with that the Kyono Oto Koke Iro and the Kobe Shinkaishi Gold. All three all three feel very similar to me. And I think all three I was sort of looking at as maybe potential uh, Inaho dupes. I do have quite a large bottle of Inaho still, so I don't really, I'm not worried about running out. But I know folks have been looking for dupes. And so I think that's why I got all these, and they just didn't quite do it for me. Um, I currently have this in a pen. I like it. It's very pretty. I don't love it, so I don't think I'm going to be replacing or I don't think I'll be purchasing it anytime soon. And this is Kobe Sorokuen Tea Green. I I love this ink. I wouldn't be, like, this is, like I was saying, this is the green I fell in love with. I purchased a bottle. I think I will always have a pen inked up with this green at any given point. I might even have two pens inked up with this green at any given point. It's just that beautiful dark, dark olive that I'm really after. Um, I do think I really just splooshed on a lot of ink here, so you might not even get to see sort of the really nice greenness of it coming through. I'll, I'll bring my swatch book out again. Because I, that's actually all my samples. And I'm, act, I'm very excited about this because I think this will help me in finding at least color families when I'm inking in this box. It's very satisfying. So like I was saying, let's look at some of those colors again. So yeah, these four, we have the Inaho, Yamabuki Iro, Shinkaichi Gold, Goose Poupon, all very similar. I definitely don't need to own all four at any given point. I currently have a bottle of Inaho. Maybe when that's finished, if that's a color I still want to use, I would get a Goose Poupon or maybe a Shinkaichi Gold. We'll see. Um, but I, I see no reason to own all four of them. They're very similar. And then here in the greens, yeah, you can even see that Koke Iro there, Koke Iro, and that hanging rice have a very similar quality. So I definitely want to play with the hanging rice before I buy a bottle of any of these. Um, and again, you can see how light that Tang Nisei Blue is just didn't quite work for me. And this is that Sorokuen Tea Green that I love. My Blues Purples. Or no, Blues Blacks Grays. Um, nothing particular I want to say there. And Reds and Purples. Yeah, here we can see these, I have these purpley gray colors. I like the Kirisame, I definitely like lighter than the other of these. I have a full bottle of it. Um, so again, it's sort of between that Taman purple gray and silky. And we'll see sort of how other purchases stack out. And these are the, these are my bottles. So thank you so much for joining me today, doing a little maintenance <laughs> on my ink collection. I think I think this is going to make it so much easier to find what I'm looking for. So 
So if you want to do these, I just got these at Staples. They are the paper reinforcement labels for like binders and things like that. Um, I got the one that said handwrite only because I assumed correctly that they'd be the papery ones and not the like shiny plastic ones. Um, but who knows? So just be careful because I know there are plastic ones that won't, that will resist ink out there. These work great. I mean, they're not that, didn't cost that much. So, thank you so much for joining me here today. That's all for now, but I look forward to having you over at my desk again, probably sometime next week. Um, yeah, I guess, leave me a comment, let me know, sort of, do you do something like this? How do you... I mean, I know a lot of you probably have those trays that you can put them in so you can see all your ink samples, but back when you didn't have so many, how did you, how do you organize them and make it so you can find the inks you're looking for quickly? Put that up there. So, thank you again. Bye!